It looks like we're all good here. Okay. Man, it is a nasty, nasty day today here in Iowa. It feels a little bit better being in our new place, but regardless, it's this is supposed to be spring, ladies and gentlemen. This is not spring. Look outside. You know, April showers bring May flowers, but these, these showers are going to turn into snowflakes here before the end of the night. And uh, I, am, I am none too happy about that, please. The focus of this, uh, first of all, just because I'm live, you know, even when, even as me, I, I have like a hundred, like the 133rd podcast that I have. And every time I do get nervous going on live, or I never got as nervous when I pre-recorded, even though I always had this thing where as I'm pre-recording right now, um, you can probably see here, microphones there. As I'm pre-recording right now, um, actually, let me see something. Let me see if I press this. Oh, look at that. It shows the outside. That is so cool. See, bam, you can see, uh, you can see how nasty it is out there. All I had to do was just press that button. Let's press it back. I think that will switch us back here. Bam, and back here I am again. Uh, but yeah, I get a little nervous. Um, I think that's just only normal when it's good. You know, I, I don't expect perfection, but I do expect some type of quality after doing it this long. Um, remember, the Backyard Preacher is not any of those so-called hucksters on PBN. I don't want your money. All I want you to do is share this podcast to as many people as possible. Share this live stream to as many people as possible. By doing that, you're doing me a favor and you're doing the world a favor. So, cheers to you, my friends. Good coffee. We live in a progressive postmodern world. And I'm a progressive postmodern preacher. Some of this may conflict with beliefs that many fundamentalists hold. That's right. Some of this may conflict with beliefs that many fundamentalists hold. Just one second, though. I do have to. It's not. All right, I'm back. This going live stuff is not always as cracked up as you may think. But what I like about it is the humanity of it all. Uh, you're, you're being able to see me and my humanity. I can't see you, but you can join, send me pics, whatever. I don't care. Um, I guess what I was trying to get at is many of the things that I talk about, many of the things that I preach about, often people think that I'm just trying to get a rise out of people, that I'm trying to go off the rails a little bit. And in, in some essences, that's the case. Uh, my duty, my ministry, my mission is literally, it's to make people think. I, I don't proselytize, okay? Uh, many people in the fundamental world proselytize. I choose not to. Uh, and the reason why, here's the reason why. I believe when Jesus spoke, when he was, um, what we have as a recording of him through the apostles and others is, Jesus was making people think. He was making people think about their life, about their existence, about what was going on in the world where they were at. Um, yes, he wanted followers, but he was making them think and choose. To choose, not to force. And when we proselytize, and this is not a, a sermon on proselytizing, it's what you're doing is you're kind of trying to force someone into believing into in your beliefs. Like, you don't believe this, you're going to burn in hell for all eternity. 
never, never, never ending lake of fire, which I question. Uh, and you should question too. Question everything. If you don't question everything, I, I, I urge you to. I urge you to step out of the box and, and be brave and be bold and, and come out of the closet, so to speak, and question what's going on. Question what's going on in the church. Question what's going on. Uh, question what your pastor tells you. Always question. Question what I tell you. Always question. When we stop questioning things, that's when we become brainless, mindless slaves to the powers that be. Remember, the Roman Catholic Church was, was in charge of most of the known world for 15, 1600 years. This church did not allow the laity to even read the Bible in their own language. It was only the positions of priests and bishops, and even many times the priests didn't even know how to read it. It was only the position of the bishops and monks oftentimes that could actually read and write. And this is not the case in this modern world that we live in, in this postmodern world that we live in, where I'm coming to you in your living room right now, all over the world. All over the world people are watching me. And the thing, the reason why is because we have this great thing called the internet. We've never had such an ability to do something like this before. This is revolutionary. And podcasting is revolutionary. And I urge you, start making podcasts. Start making podcasts as soon as possible. You have something interesting that I want to see. I guarantee it. I guarantee you know something that I don't. And I want to learn it. And the more we can share our interconnectedness with each other, the more we can get into this global concept and see that? Five fingers, all right? We put it together, it makes a fist. When we all come together, we all come together, we are unstoppable. We are an unstoppable power. And that's all of us, of every race, every ethnicity. We have the abilities within us. We do not have to put up with controlling societies that tell us how we should think, how we should act, Instead, we do the thinking. We come together with a collective consciousness to live in a better world today. I believe Jesus was not just thinking about the future and the future coming of God and his kingdom and glory, which I totally believe in, obviously. But I believe that Jesus was also talking about let's live a better life today. Let's live a better life right here in the moment, in the now. When he was speaking of the lilies of the field and how Solomon was not dressed in such splendor. That is the way that we can live now, just as the flowers grow. Without thinking, they don't, they don't worry about it. They just grow. They don't spin or toil. Things just happen. And you can create things to just happen in your life. And I believe you can do that right now. So we're going to get to the bottom of this whole Christianity debate. I've entitled The Backyard Preacher number 133, Quantum Christianity. In the quantum world, in the quantum sense, scientists look at things that are just on the microscopic level, what you can almost not even barely see. You can't see it with a naked eye. Scientists come have came to a conclusion that what takes place on the quantum level, which is in all of us, we are all quantum. We all have, at the very molecular level, just weird stuff going on and we can't exactly explain what it is i mean we have particles appearing in one place and another place at the exact same time um we this the rules that we know of knowing the rules that we know of physics do not exist on the quantum level the rules that we know of physics do not exist on the quantum level on the quantum level all the rules of physics just go out the window. And what I propose here with quantum Christianity is that most of the dogma, most of the rules that are taught in church today go out the window because they don't even really exist. It was us who created these things. We humans, we imperfect humans created 
an imperfect church. We imperfect humans created what we have as rules and dogma within our religions, including mine, Christianity. Excuse me, cup of coffee. So if we want to go back, if we want to go way back, we got to look at Genesis. In the beginning, and it's often fun to uh, look at Eli Helm, that's the uh, Hebrew for the Godhead that the writer of Genesis, which we really don't know who the writer of Genesis is. Most fundamental Christians believe it was Moses. I'll just say it's Moses because we really don't have that many other people to pick from. But we really don't know. I mean, it could have been any, it could have been someone that, who knows? We have really no idea. Uh, but regardless, it does give us some very good scholars in the archaeological field have definitely found evidence for the book of Genesis and the Old Testament books uh, based on the findings that they have found over in the, the Holy Lands. So that gives me a lot of credit to, to the Old Testament and to its writings, also to Genesis, okay? So regardless, secular scholarship definitely does back up the, the authenticity of the book of Genesis. And it's funny, to, it's a funny fact that the writer was writing about um, God in the feminine um, and God birthed. So God really, we, we present God as this male deity and Jesus talks about the father we, he was living in a patriarchal society at, at the time that it was written in the Hebrew. Whenever God gives birth to something, it's written within the, the feminine. And, and so it is in the book of Genesis, especially the second chapter, the Eli home, meaning the feminine, the female God, the female deity. It's also interesting and to note that in the beginning, and this is this is just such a mystery, okay? We really don't know. And you know, I'll be the first preacher to tell you, we don't know. Uh, I don't care who you are, you may think you know, and you may know in faith that you know, and that's fine. I, I give I give you that. Uh, but if we come down to the fact that we don't know, we can start learning. We can start learning. And I think that's one of the most important things is to start learning. Uh, what has this creation turned into? What has this creation turned into? Obviously this creation has turned into a mess. Um, wars, rumors of wars. Jesus talked about it. It's been going on for millennia from time immemorial we've been killing each other story of Cain and Abel tells us that uh, quite frankly what God did in the beginning he was with himself he was with when he says he was with himself he he talks to himself in the plural it's interesting us and our are used oftentimes and this us and this are who are these us and this ours well many christians have hypothesized that that's the son the father and holy spirit talking to each other in community well that definitely is uh noteworthy that it definitely is um hey that's a good explanation I don't know if I buy it, and because here's why. We created the whole idea of the Trinity. Now, I adhere to the idea of the Trinity. I do, because it sounds pretty legit. I mean, why not? It sounds legit. It sounds good. But do I 100% uh, totally agree with that's what they were talking about, us and ours, that they, it was the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit talking with each other when they created man and also after man fell that that we we better close off the garden or he's going to eat of the tree of uh 
of life and live forever like us, knowing good and evil. And that's always been an interesting passage for me as well, because, well, if we were to eat of the tree of life after we ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and be like God, well, why wouldn't we want to be like God? Why wouldn't God want us to be like him? That's kind of intriguing. Why would we go through all the bother of, as us Christians uh, look at it, with Jesus having to uh, come and die for our sins, which I am grateful for, but wouldn't it have been a lot easier to eat of the tree of life and we would then just live forever? Hmm. And we would be like God? Interesting. Very interesting. So in many ways, when I'm talking about quantum Christianity, a lot of the Christianity that we know of just kind of gets tossed out the window because we really don't know where our beginnings and origins come from when it comes to Genesis and, and um, the continuality, continuedness of that. Why would God even put a tree of knowledge in the in the script in this text or in in the, in a garden per se? Why would he? I don't know. If that story is even remote, if if the writer is even talking about a real tree or not, I kind of personally believe it. Uh, the writer is giving us an analogy for something else, something that we just don't know. Um, many times people use the Bible as the acronym of the basic instructions before leaving earth. I think that is quite correct because it is therefore basic. It is the basic instructions before leaving earth. It doesn't give us in full detail everything we would like to know. Okay, so there's just many things we got to live by faith by. Uh, we take the good and the bad. We take what we can understand with what we can't understand. I want to change this. Let's see, where am I at? This is another good one, another good observation. Oftentimes, in the quantum world of Christianity, we would look at, well, it was God giving us free will. If we didn't have the tree of good and evil, then we would not be possessing free will. And a lot of fundamentalists will relate to uh, the angels as saying that they don't have free will, which we obviously know is false because Lucifer and a third of the angels fell with him. So they obviously had free will as well. Adam obviously had free will as well, or he wouldn't have been able to even eat of the tree along with Eve. The thing is, we just don't know exactly. We just don't know. And that's the beginning of wisdom in a lot of senses. They say the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And that's exactly, that is kind of the fear of God because we're fearing the unknown. And we just don't know. So, how many times is a preacher on Sunday mornings going to get up there and say, you know what, I just don't know, guys. I'm going to preach on this, but you know what, I don't know. It could all be wrong. How many? Not many. But let me tell you something. And this is what I'm trying to get at. I spent almost 20 minutes trying to get at this. But here we go. We take everything else aside. We really quantify, quantize this whole thing. And I say this. What if? What if? And this is the message really for today. At the quantum level of Christianity, at the very, very, very basic core of who God is and who we are in God, there is no failure. There is no success. There is no positive and there is no negative. There is no right and there is no wrong. There is no failure, no success. 
is just doing. There is no positive there is or negative. It's just being. And there is no right. There is no wrong. There is just love. That, my friends, came to me one night and I made a meme about it. And I felt like this was really the core of Christianity. Jesus was love. So therefore, when we speak of Christ, when we speak of Christianity, we are speaking of Christ's love at this level. No failure, no success, no positive, no negative, no right, no wrong. There's just doing, there's just being, there's just love. Just doing, just being, just love. Then, my friends, if we can wrap our heads around that, if we can wrap our heads around that and live that out every day amongst our fellows, we then can live out a life that is living in Christ. We can then live out a life that is uh, portraying Jesus and being spreading the love of Jesus more than ever before. So let that sink in. Let the dogma, let the rules just go out the window. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email me at, at my website, natesprout.com. N-A-T-E-S-P-R-O-T-T.com. Uh, so I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of feedback. I already know I'm the biggest heretic out there in the Christian world. Not the biggest, believe me, I'm not the biggest. But I like to say that. Um, God, I bless you. Peace be upon you. Go out there and shine. Remember, you're not a failure or success. You're not right. You're wrong. You're just being, doing, love. There's no positive. There's no negative. We're just in existence here in this plane of reality. God bless you all. And we'll see you next time on The Backyard Preacher. Thank you for tuning in. God bless.